Okay, so with this document all set up, ready to go, let's make the first keyframe. The first keyframe, of course, being the first contact. Now, this contact step is going to play uh, an important role and is not only going to be our first keyframe, but also our last keyframe. And that way, we're going to create a um, animation, a walk cycle that can continually be looped to give the impression of um, a, con a continual walk cycle. Um, before actually I start um, animating or moving this character, I think it would be smart if I go back to the scene layer and create a new layer and um, call this ground and give it a ground layer by um, simply creating a straight line using the line tool and holding shift so it's a straight line and that way um, I know where the ground is so uh, we're not creating a floating walk cycle okay so go back into the character um, one thing you'll notice that if you double click the body you will get a uh, you'll just get the body symbol and you won't have any of the background to reference so my suggestion is uh, double click on uh, Sally herself okay so the first thing I need to do is um, actually model Sally into this pose right here so I'm gonna start by um, selecting in uh, the timeline in the layers um, the legs and positioning them to uh, fit as uh, closely as I can this pose so let's start with the right leg and I'm gonna go ahead and select the whole right leg by grabbing uh, all three of these layers and you can see it has all three of these selected and uh, I can zoom in so you can get a better look at that and um, by hitting the free transform tool uh, I will now have a full selection of all three of these parts the right leg right leg lower and the right leg foot um, even though each one of these body parts has been individually pivoted within the symbols when making a group selection um, there will be a group pivot so as you can see, as I pick this group, um, it gave me a generic pivot of centralized right into this. So if I started to move it, um, rotate it, it would pivot that whole group from here, and that's no good. Um, so I'm going to have to drag this pivot to the most logical place, which would be at the hip, where the leg moves. So <clears throat> now I can move the whole body or the whole uh, group of images and um, now that I have you know so I can get it closer um, to deselect from this group I can uh, hold down shift and click on one of these body parts that I no longer want to be a part of this selection like the upper thigh so now I just have the lower leg and the lower and, and the foot Again, uh, I'll have to change the groupings pivot point. So I'm going to move that to the knee. And um, uh, same thing. If I hold down shift again and just select the, the lower leg, you know, sometimes you'll have to be extra precise. Um, now I just have the foot selected. And since each individual part of her of her body has been pivoted we you know you do not have to change the pivot point in fact note this down do not change the pivot points of individual body parts otherwise you will be um, sorry as the um, the registration for that body part will have gotten changed
Okay, so that's pretty close to this. And now I'm going to do the same thing uh, for this leg. So I'm going to go up and select the left leg, left leg lower, and left leg foot. Same way. So now I have this whole grouping. One thing um, that might become a distraction is that this uh, mid-torso piece is uh, in the way, obstructing the view of this leg. So you can actually go to the mid-torso -tors layer and click it into outline mode and now you can see through it okay so I'm going to try and copy this pose as best as I can and uh, now I'm going to deselect this larger part of the leg and uh, this animating process is a, a lot of repetition and um, it's okay to go slow on this one because you want to get it right. Oh, I'm going to deselect this. Now it's just the foot. Again, I'm not going to change that pivot point. All right. So now I'm going to uh, attend to the arms. And you can see that the right arm is thrust forward. I'm going to do that with the right arm and the right arm hand. that forward. Simple as that. And I'm going to do that now in reverse for the left arm and the left arm hand. Again, I can't see it, so I might have to put a couple of these uh, pieces into outline mode, like the upper torso. I'll do that. And I can kind of get a glimpse. <laughs> uh, I guess it's not really fair to you guys, so I'm going to put the other arm into outline mode as well so I can see through it. Okay. So, with the free transform tool, I'm going to jut this one back. Okay, so that's pretty basic. You can go in there and really, uh, you know, mess with the tail and all that stuff. I suggest that we come back to the tail after uh, the walk is adjusted so that we can sort of dictate by the walk when the tail is going to bounce up and down or anything like that. So um, one thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the whole body by uh, using the uh, selection tool and selecting the whole body and using free transform. I'm going to put this pivot somewhere in the hips. It just makes more sense to me. And lean it kind of forward just for the legs. You can also uh, just uh, make a group selection by holding shift to make a mass selection or command or control if you're using the PC to make uh, a more precise selection. So I'm, using, I'm holding down command and I want to select the whole body uh, except the legs everything but the legs and I'm gonna lean it back a little bit as you can see in this example right here um, this figure sort of has an arch in the back so I'm gonna try my best to mimic that and maybe even bring uh, this top half of this of the torso all but the mid and lower to torso so let's go back and make a selection of just the head right arm right arm hand, upper torso, not the legs, not the mid torso, just this right here and um, lean it forward just a little bit and maybe even just lean, lean the head back a little bit to give it a little bit more character in this pose. Uh, so there I have my um, first contact and the next step is to duplicate this keyframe or sets of keyframes and uh, paste them over into the last contact. So to do that um, I'm going to do that over here in the timeline and not actually here on the stage. So I'm going to 
click and shift click all of these frames, all the the black dots of the keyframes that I just made, and right clicking on them on the actual timeline on those highlighted frames, I'm going to go to copy frames. All right, and then I'm actually going to highlight this section over here, right under the last keyframe. Right click again, and paste frames. There you go. So now I have two keyframes of exactly the same um, same pose. And if I turn on my onion skin, which is down here at the bottom again, if I turn on onion skinning and have it so and stretch it so it you know encompasses my whole timeline, I can move this selected um, pose and I can see as a ghostly shadow what the the last pose looked like. Um, I'm going to back step uh, with uh, control or command Z and I'm going to move it over again but this time I'm going to hold down shift and the reason why I'm holding down shift is so when I move it to the right it uh, stays in a straight line and that way um, I'm not losing I'm not, you know, it's not going to be higher or low, lower. It's going to be on the exact same line. And uh, that way the walk is going to look a little bit more uh, stable. Now I'm just going to move it over to the right for now uh, a little bit because I'm still not quite sure where it's going to end in the walk. I have to make the middle contact first. Um, so actually what I'm going to do is make a selection over the center contact on the timeline. So shift select and instead of copy and pasting those frames over this time, this time I'm just going to hit the hotkey F6. So all that is doing is duplicating this keyframe or it's saying new keyframe and it's repeating um, this last one. So I can stretch this onion skin over and I can see where it, uh, it ends and where it begins and now I have the one in the middle. So I'm going to back step again and hold shift so it's in line. And this time I'm going to make the new contact or the center contact at this point in the walk cycle is when the uh, right leg crosses over and makes you know, for the second step's contact. So, I'm going to have to uh, switch these legs around. So, let's make this pose and then you know, we'll call it the end of this video. So, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So, referencing this pose right here, I know that this is where the left leg crosses over and the next step begins. So, these legs have got to switch around. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll probably throw the mid torso and the upper torso into a wireframe so I can see it better. And now I'll just make a group selection of the right leg. Okay, over here on the timeline. So I'm going to pick uh, the right leg just like I did before. Notice though that the scrub indicator is over the keyframe that I choose to be working on. That means that I'm working on, on these current frames and not over here and not over there. This is important uh, so you don't get uh, uh, mixed up in what you're doing. Uh, this scrubber indicates which frame you're working on. So we want to be working on frame 17 um, C, the middle contact. Okay. So, with my free transform tool, remember I have to change this grouping's pivot point. I'm going to move it over. And actually, I'm going to probably uh, move it over to the right a little. And um, maybe drop it down a little. little finesse and 
now I'm going to do the same thing with the lower leg, or the left leg. So grab that whole selection, and um, I can't see it, so I might have to put uh, the right leg into wireframe. Not a problem. And now I can actually adjust this rear leg. Now, here's what we're really trying to do. Um, we're trying to get these legs so they match up. So the idea is that this back leg and the previous contact, this left leg and the previous contact rested on the ground here. This is where it meets the ground. So this is where the hill hits, the hill, the heel of the foot, and where the foot becomes planted until the high point contact, even in the contact, it has yet to move only in the recoil of the next step does this foot lift the ground. So this foot and the next contact in the center contact has to stay where it landed originally. Otherwise it will look like um, Sally is floating. So I'm going to actually put the lower torso and wireframe as well so I can get a better look of what this thing looks like. I'm going to deselect this upper leg and the left leg. And one way I can do that without trying to um, juggle through all this wireframe is come right over here to my timeline and select the lower left leg and the lower left foot and adjust these slightly. That looks about that looks about right. I'm going to adjust these arms. So right arm and right arm hand. Now they are going to be in reverse this time. Uh, the right arm is going to be swinging back. And the left arm is going to be swinging forward. Okay. So next, I've got to make sure, like I said earlier, that this foot, you know, meets in the same place that it landed in the first step. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can zoom out just a little bit so I can see what I'm doing and select the whole character. Make sure that the scrubber, you know, is where I want to be working, and holding down shift I'm gonna slide Sally completely over so this is where the toes landed before and now I'm gonna do the same thing with the last keyframe so I'm gonna move that scrubber over and I'm going to make uh, the whole selection holding down shift to bring it over so this is where that final contact was and um, now I'm noticing that this foot right here is a little extreme so I am just going to adjust it a little bit so it's not so extreme extremely pointed and it looks like I'm going to have to move it over some more because of that. All right, that looks just right. And since I changed this foot, I'm going to change it on the first one. But instead of trying to adjust it perfectly, I'm going to select this foot. Here it is, copy this frame, copy that frame, and come over to the first frame, and paste it. looks like I'm going to have to move it just right. Okay. Maybe might need to adjust it a little bit.
when adjusting these frames and um, say you're trying to adjust it in free transform mode and you have these bounding boxes they can get a little bit in your way and unless you're trying to rotate it they're kind of useless so you can switch over to this you know selection tool just so uh, you can see the shape and a bounding box rather than seeing all those handles at the same time so I'm gonna put this back into solid mode and um, get rid of the onion skinning and and we can go through and see our main keyframes so we have the first contact the middle contact you can already see that that's a nice move see how that left foot stays stays in contact with the ground it doesn't shift or move any which way to the last keyframe again this is a lot a lot better a solid step whereas this right foot doesn't float it stays exactly where it was so this is you know this is a great place to begin when we come back for the next video we will talk about putting in these passing um, keyframes and work our way through finishing up this walk